Uh, before Dazed and Confused, which was the first film that you did with Rick, um, did you know him? I did not know him. Right, so how do you kind of walk in to the beginning of a relationship like this? What's, what, what sort of um, I had no idea have? what to expect of him, and I, I had moved to Austin, Texas about nine months before he started Dazed and Confused, and I wrote him a letter. I heard that he was going to be directing a film for Universal, and I wrote him a letter, and uh, about three weeks later, he called me to come in for an interview for Dazed. And when, once I had the job, I had no idea what, I really had no idea what it was going to be like to work with him. He was a new director. He had directed one film previously, Slacker, which I had never seen and I don't think I'd even really heard of. And I, this, it was my first solo studio film mm -hmm. as an editor. So it was terrifying for me mm -hmm. to walk in with a complete unknown as a director. I had no idea how he was going to manage mm -hmm. uh, to cover all of the script was thick. It was a heavy duty script. So there were a lot of unknowns mm -hmm. and I just kind of... So, but what was the interview with him like? Uh, he was already... Did you do all that internet research that we used to do 22 years ago? No, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah. I knew nothing. I really, I had read the script and that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. um, he was already in full-blown pre-production. He had already cast the film. And when I went to the production office, there were all these people walking around in 70s uh, <laughs> costumes and wigs and... Um, and that was just the production staff, right? That, <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, he had created cassette tapes of the music that he was interested in trying to get for the movie. And there was that kind of mid-70s rock and roll playing on some speaker. And it was the vibe in the production office was really fun and people were excited. And, and Rick was most definitely in shorts. Mm -hmm. I don't remember for sure, but the guy wore shorts all the time. So he was dressed very casually, and the interview was very casual, mm -hmm. very... Um... How does the process work for the first cut? Now, this may have evolved over time with you, but uh, does Rick allow you to create freely, or does he stay close even before the first cut? On Dazed and Confused, we watch dailies together, and I put the first cut together while he was shooting. I usually start first day of shooting and finish at answer print, or you know, finished movie. He didn't really know me and did entrust me with the first cut. And after the first cut, he was in the room all the time. Mm -hmm. But that was 22 years ago. Now it's different. He's not in the room all the time. We have very in-depth conversations and he pretty much leaves me alone. But on Dazed, he, once I delivered the editor's cut, which was very long, he came into the room and he was there every day. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't like huddling over my shoulder or anything. He just was there and, and really helped guide. We made Dazed and Confused together. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if you take one of your scenes, uh, like this one, let's say, how different is the finished cut from the first cut? And how it do depends. you approach a new scene? It, uh, it really depends on the movie. Uh, School of Rock, the first cut on School of Rock was really tight and really good, and it did not change that much. I would say probably 85% of School of Rock is the same as my first cut. Other films, like Dazed, night and day difference. Mm -hmm. and so I'm curious about how uh, Linklater approached you about Boyhood and how you reacted when he told you it was a 12-year project. I had just finished editing Waking Life and Tape. And I remember him coming in and just saying, we're going to be shooting this thing uh, over the course of 12 years. And we're shooting the first episode this summer. 
are you going to be around? I'm like, yeah, of course. He didn't really ask me to commit to 12 years. I think he just assumed that I would be around. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so he didn't, I don't, as I recall, he did not come and ask me to commit to 12 years. I, you know, I think he thinks I'm never going to go anywhere, so I'll just be there. A you know, he is, a, he is a very willing director when it comes to letting go. He's, he's, I think Dazed and Confused was a huge lesson for him about you got to get on board and you got to let go. And he holds on as long as he can, and then he's a willing, uh, mm -hmm. he's willing to let go. And um, Willing to let go to someone who he has a rapport with and who he yeah. trusts too. So. And you know, he's very, he's smart when it comes to notes. I mean, he will, we will uh, dissect a scene and maybe we will just take one exchange in the middle, one back and forth out of the middle of a scene and it's suddenly shorter and more poignant and you never remember that it was ever even mm -hmm. in there five minutes after it's gone. And he's very willing to wrap his head around those kinds of things. An example is uh, in Boyhood, there's a scene where Ethan Hawke talks to Mason about the Beatles' Black Album. And it's a, it was originally a really long scene that Ethan wrote, basically, came up with this long thing about the Beatles and how the Beatles were you know, they had their own sound, each distinct beetle had their own sound and what they brought to the group and that, but there is no one special beetle and this whole long thing that was beautiful, but it was very, very long. And we lived with it for, for a year and then it just became evident that we were gonna have to cut it. And Rick and I talked about where we could cut it and how we would cut it and then, you know, we had, my assistant, there were no script pages on Boyhood. Very, very few script pages that were actually written. I had some handwritten script pages and some pages that just said, you know, Mason and Sheena driving the truck to Austin. And that was all for like a five minute long dialogue scene. But so we had my assistant transcribe the Beatles scene and then we just went in and you know bracketed sentences that could come out and still have it make sense. Mm -hmm. And we worked on paper with it that way, and then we came up with the cuts and we put it together and the scene works fine. Uh, you never know great. there's anything missing. Yeah.